Champions League resumes tonight in Panama for Real Salt Lake. And we'll take a look at a bunch of injuries that could affect the playoff races next on The Daily. Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, September 18th with Simon Borg. I'm Jason Seguini. Real Salt Lake continue their Champions League trek tonight down in Panama against Toro FC. And Simon, they're going to have to do this one without Kyle Beckerman. And Jason, his natural replacement, Jordani Alvarez, didn't make the trip either. So the situation complicates itself for Salt Lake. They have to win. Why? Anything but a win means that Herediano receive Toro at home in the next uh, match day and they could win qualification out of this group by a win. Uh, so this is a big, big game. Real Salt Lake has to keep the pressure on Herediano, uh, but they're going to have these lineup uh, situations. But the good thing is that Hamisin Olave comes back uh, for Real Salt Lake, but the big issue, they haven't won away from home in three months. Can they get over the hump? Yeah, and Ned Grabavoy and Will Johnson, we've seen them both kind of fill in at that holding midfielder uh, position from time to time. We'll see. I expect Ned Grabavoy tonight. Again, that game, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox Soccer Channel. It's Tuesday, and that means injury report day. A lot going on that's going to affect the playoff races. And we'll start in the Western Conference, where San Jose expects Marvin Chavez to be out at least another week. Frank Gallup still holding Shea Salinas out, so we should see more of Medi Bellucci. But it's not all bad news. Some teams getting players back, including some of the Western powers, Simon. And let's start with Seattle Sounders. David Estrada, who if you remember in the early season was knocking in the goals for Seattle, really uh, made a big contribution. He's getting back. He had some time in a reserve league game. Uh, he's not traveling with the team for Champions League, but again, he's surely uh, on his way back. Uh, and then LA Galaxy, Edson Buttle, another guy who's not them in for the Galaxy in the past. He won't be first choice because I think Donovan and Keane have cemented that forward spot. But again, an experienced national teamer, 2010 World Cup veteran. And for both Seattle and LA, they're still busy in Champions League. So both these players will come in handy. Yeah, some depth for uh, teams who are playing a lot of games right now. Two teams in the Eastern Conference that are battling out for that last playoff spot, DC United and the Columbus Crew. They have some injury concerns. I'm not sure how bad it is, but they're big names. Yeah, for Columbus, it's Federico Higuain, their designated player. He did not start against the Red Bulls over the weekend because of this issue he has in his right toe, uh, and he wasn't too forthcoming with the information himself, but apparently he got a shot for it. So it's serious enough, but he says he's ready to play for the team on Wednesday night against Chivas USA, so that's a big boost for Columbus. For DC, it's less about injury and more about fitness. Mm -hmm. Branko Boscovic, uh, he's a player that uh, a lot of weight is on him right now. Now the designated player, Dwayne Durasar, is out of the picture. He's the MVP. He's gone for the rest of the year. They expect Boscovic to pick up the slack, but he was taken before the 60th minute, taken out of the game over the weekend against New England, and Ben Olsen says it's fitness, and it costs the team when he can't keep up with the rhythm of a game. He contributes in a lot of ways, so can Boscovic keep that fitness up now for the stretch run? All right, well, uh, don't forget to get your fantasy teams locked in before the games tomorrow as well. And obviously, you can check the injury report on MLSsoccer.com. Yesterday was Monday, so of course we had another edition of Extra Time Radio. A couple of big guests, Hans Bakke, the head coach of the New York Red Bulls. And for the first time, we heard from the newest Seattle sounder, Marcus Hahnemann. Interesting things to say from him, huh? Yeah, it was a little surprising, frankly, Jason. Uh, I think many thought that Hahnemann was still training, still involved with clubs, but it turns out he basically been retired now for, for a couple months here. Uh, and the Seattle Sounders are taking him out of retirement. He talked about how difficult it is now to get back in the swing of things, how difficult it is to get the fitness back. And you wonder, um, you know, is it all worth it in the end for both him and the club to go to these lengths uh, when, again, he was practically retired? Well, we'll see if the uh, depth in the goalkeeping position helps the Sounders as they make that final run. Also want to mention, from, from the old to the young, 24 under 24 continues yesterday. We saw Montreal impact midfielder Felipe at number five. And, and Simon, what a player he's been this season. Absolutely. I think he's been the revelation, the find of the season in MLS. There was a good buzz uh, during preseason about what Felipe can do, but I think as the season progressed, you saw how sure he is with the ball at his feet. He has ideas. Uh, he has tricks up his sleeves, he's, and he's clean technically, so he contributes a lot. He's played all over the midfield uh, for Montreal. I think he'll continue to be a star. He's only 21. 
Yep, stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com to see number four on the 24 under 24 release today. Also, power rankings come out today. San Jose probably on top. See if anything else uh, moved around underneath them. And also, instant replay. You can check that out as Simon takes a look at all the controversial calls from the weekend. We'll be back on The Daily tomorrow.